Section nine of Oscar Wilde Art and Morality A Defence of the Picture of Dorian Gray Edited by Stuart Mason This Librivox recording is in the public domain Recording by Martin Geeson Section nine we allow absolute freedom to the journalist and entirely limit the artist english public opinion that is to say tries to constrain and impede and warp the man who makes things that are beautiful in effect and compels the journalist to retail things that are ugly or disgusting or revolting in fact so that we have the most serious journalists in the world and the most indecent newspapers the scots observers review the following diatribe is from a journal the scots observer which had an ephemeral existence in the early nineties under the heading of reviews and magazines it launched forth in these words why go grubbing in muck heaps the world is fair and the proportion of healthy-minded men and honest women to those that are foul fallen or unnatural is great mr oscar wilde has again been writing stuff that were better unwritten and while the picture of dorian gray which he contributes to lippincott's is ingenious interesting full of cleverness and plainly the work of a man of letters it is false art for its interest is medico-legal it is false to human nature for its hero is a devil it is false to morality for it is not made sufficiently clear that the writer does not prefer a course of unnatural iniquity to a life of cleanliness health and sanity the story which deals with matters only fitted for the criminal investigation department or a hearing in camera is discreditable alike to author and editor mr wilde has brains and art and style but if he can write for none but outlawed noblemen and perverted telegraph boys the sooner he takes to tailoring or some other decent trade the better for his own reputation and the public morals the scots observer was edited by w e henley it was violently tory in character and afterwards became the national observer but not even a rechristening could save it from an early death we are dominated by journalism journalism governs for ever and ever oscar wilde's replies to this vulgar abuse wilde condescended to reply in the following terms sixteen tight street chelsea ninth july eighteen ninety sir you have published a review of my story the picture of dorian gray as this review is grossly unjust to me as an artist i ask you to allow me to exercise in your columns my right of reply your reviewer sir while admitting that the story in question is plainly the work of a man of letters the work of one who has brains and art and style yet suggests and apparently in all seriousness that i have written it in order that it should be read by the most depraved members of the criminal and illiterate classes now sir i do not suppose that the criminal and illiterate classes ever read anything except newspapers they are certainly not likely to be able to understand anything of mine so let them pass and on the broad question of why a man of letters writes at all let me say this 
the pleasure that one has in creating a work of art is a purely personal pleasure and it is for the sake of this pleasure that one creates the artist works with his eye on the object nothing else interests him what people are likely to say does not even occur to him he is fascinated by what he has in hand he is indifferent to others i write because it gives me the greatest possible artistic pleasure to write if my work pleases the few i am gratified if it does not it causes me no pain as for the mob i have no desire to be a popular novelist it is far too easy your critic then sir commits the absolutely unpardonable crime of trying to confuse the artist with his subject matter for this sir there is no excuse at all of one who is the greatest figure in the world's literature since greek days keats remarked that he had as much pleasure in conceiving the evil as he had in conceiving the good let your reviewer sir consider the bearings of keats's criticism for it is under these conditions that every artist works one stands remote from one's subject matter one creates it and one contemplates it the further away the subject matter is the more freely can the artist work your reviewer suggests that i do not make it sufficiently clear whether i prefer virtue to wickedness or wickedness to virtue an artist sir has no ethical sympathies at all virtue and wickedness are to him simply what the colours on his palette are to the painter they are no more and they are no less he sees that by their means a certain artistic effect can be produced and he produces it iago may be morally horrible and imogen stainlessly pure shakespeare as keats said had as much delight in creating the one as he had in creating the other it was necessary sir for the dramatic development of this story to surround dorian gray with an atmosphere of moral corruption otherwise the story would have had no meaning and the plot no issue to keep this atmosphere vague and indeterminate and wonderful was the aim of the artist who wrote the story i claim sir that he has succeeded each man sees his own sin in dorian gray what dorian gray's sins are no one knows he who finds them has brought them in conclusion sir let me say how really deeply i regret that you should have permitted such a notice as the one i feel constrained to write on to have appeared in your paper that the editor of the st james's gazette should have employed caliban as his art critic was possibly natural the editor of the scots observer should not have allowed thersites to make mows in his reviews it is unworthy of so distinguished a man of letters i am etc oscar wilde to this letter the following editorial note was added it was not to be expected that mr wilde would agree with his reviewer as to the artistic merit of his booklet let it be conceded to him that he has succeeded in surrounding his hero with such an atmosphere as he describes this is his reward it is none the less legitimate for a critic to hold and to express the opinion that no treatment however skilful can make the atmosphere tolerable to his readers that is his punishment no doubt it is the artist's privilege to be nasty 
but he must exercise that privilege at his peril during the next two weeks various correspondents aired their views on the subject and in the third week footnote august second oscar wilde replied to them thus sir in a letter dealing with the relations of art to morals published in your columns a letter which i may say seems to me in many respects admirable especially in its insistence on the right of the artist to select his own subject matter mr charles whibley suggests that it must be peculiarly painful to me to find that the ethical import of dorian gray has been so strongly recognized by the foremost christian papers of england and america that i have been greeted by more than one of them as a moral reformer allow me sir to reassure on this point not merely mr charles whibley himself but also your no doubt anxious readers i have no hesitation in saying that i regard such criticisms as a very gratifying tribute to my story for if a work of art is rich and vital and complete those who have artistic instincts will see its beauty and those to whom ethics appeal more strongly than aesthetics will see its moral lesson it will fill the cowardly with terror and the unclean will see in it their own shame it will be to each man what he is himself it is the spectator and not life that art really mirrors and so in the case of dorian gray the purely literary critic as in the speaker and elsewhere regards it as a serious and fascinating work of art the critic who deals with art in its relation to conduct as the christian leader and the christian world regards it as an ethical parable like which i am told is the organ of the english mystics regards it as a work of high spiritual import the st james's gazette which is seeking apparently to be the organ of the prurient sees or pretends to see in it all kinds of dreadful things and hints at treasury prosecutions and your mr charles Wibley genially says that he discovers in it lots of morality it is quite true that he goes on to say that he detects no art in it but i do not think that it is fair to expect a critic to be able to see a work of art from every point of view even gautier had his limitations just as much as diderot had and in modern england goethe's are rare i can only assure mr charles whibley that no moral apotheosis to which he has added the most modest contribution could possibly be a source of unhappiness to an artist i remain sir your obedient servant oscar wilde End of section nine.